Hi, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie and in today's episode, hang on a minute. That's better. I'm going to be making some Christmas decorations. I've decided my workshop doesn't look very Christmassy. Christmas is coming, so I'm going to make some Christmas lights to just festive the place up a little. I've made some notes about what I think about when I think of Christmas lights. The shape, I could either go with like a flat shape or I've seen quite a lot of like 3D circuit sculptures. I've never had a go at circuit sculptures, but I think it would be quite fun. You've got some sort of control. I could just leave them on all the time, but it would be cool to have some control. And power. I could power them all individually. I'm thinking I don't just want one. If they're going to be individual size, you could hang on a tree. I think having a few would be more interesting. So individual would be quite a lot of power supplies, but they'd be really easy to move about. A string, having them connected one to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. I thought it'd be really cool to be able to do something completely wireless and just move them around. I'm not sure how feasible this is. Uh, I could have batteries on them, I could have a rechargeable battery, but I'm not sure about that, having to remember to charge your Christmas lights or remember to change the batteries of the Christmas lights. Just seems like something I'm going to forget to do. I could do solar, so have a battery on the light and a little solar panel and charge it. I really like this idea, but we don't tend to get the most sunlight at Christmas. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to charge them on the size of a solar panel that I could hide on the decoration itself. So I like that option, but I don't think it's going to be possible. Um, so they're my current ideas. If you've got any different ideas, uh, other things you think I should have added, let me know on the Element 14 community. I'd be interested in knowing what you think of these ideas or what you might change. But for now, I think I'm going to go for flashy twinkly, something that can be hung on a tree or on a shelf edge, 3D circuit sculpture, internet of things, and wire them all in a string. So with all those options in mind, I'm going to start coming up with my idea. With the circuit sculpture idea, I think I'm going to need a PCB. So I'm going to start designing the PCB and then I can get a parts list ready to order. So for the circuit, I started off in FreeCAD and made this outline so I could evenly space the LEDs around the PCB. Um, this is so I knew how many LEDs I'm going to need. This LED at the bottom here, I've put the outline for it. If we were doing it in 2D, I'd populate that. I'm hoping to do a 3D. So actually that's going to be where the connector is for the sort of 3D aspect of it. So I'm not going to use that, but I've put it on the template just in case I wanted to do a flat PCB. So knowing how many LEDs I wanted, I could then go into KitKat and I've taken the Pico, I've left RX and TX for doing serial comms to the ESP8266, which is here. I've then added all these LEDs. LED8 is missing because it's that bottom one. So I've added all the others. I've renamed them so that they sort of make sense which side they're on. I then got the connector for the power I've put a push button in so I can reset the device for putting it into programming mode. I've got the light sensor and then these are going to be my connectors for the 3D aspect of it. And I've got an LED on each side which will be connected so they'll both be on at the same time. Then I can go into PCB editor and I made the PCB for the main side of it. So I've used that template to position the LEDs and resistors. But if I go into here, it's uh, a bit clearer to see the PCBs on the 3D viewer. So I've got that and that. 
that connector won't actually be positioned there. I'm going to put a right angle one in so it's sticking up from the top. But that's all like that. And then the last thing is the wings for on the 3D, which are here. So this is only half the circle. I don't need to do the other half because the other half is the same as this half. So I'm just going to get double of these made. And I've just got pads right on the very edge so I can bridge it to the pads that are flat on the main PCB. And I've used the template again to position them. So I'm going to send that off to be made. And then once it comes back, we can get it all populated with parts. So my PCBs have arrived. I've got the main board with the space for the Pico, the Audi R and the Wi-Fi ESP module on the back. That can be used on its own as a 2D bauble, both sided. Or I've got these pads and these wings, which I can solder at 90 degrees and make the bauble 3D. And now the parts. I've got these white 0805 LEDs. For the resistors, the calculations for those LEDs come out at 510 ohm um, based on the data sheet's ideal values. I think that's going to be very bright um, and I don't want them to be so bright you can't look at them. So I've also got as options uh, 1K, which I think is going to be probably appropriate. Based on the graphs in the data sheet, I think there's potential that that's still going to be too bright. So I've also got 3K. So I'm going to do some experiments and see which of those resistors is going to be best on each LED. I've got some surface mount switches to put on the board so we can reset the PK to put it in boot select without having to remove the USB each time. I've got my Audi R's so I can sense when it's getting dark and turn the baubles on. I've got Molex connectors um, to go on the top to connect. So I've got the male and the mating female. I've got my ESP8266 modules that go on the back which will give our Pico uh, a Wi-Fi connection and allow us to use MQTT to control the lights. And then most importantly, I've got our Raspberry Pi Pico board, which is going to control all of this and actually make our baubles work. So now I've got all that, I'm going to solder it up. First, I'm going to do a bit of a test with the 1K, 3K and 510 resistors, we can see what's going to work best and then I can get the baubles all soldered. Hello, I'm James from Workbench Wednesdays, a show about the stuff found on your electronics workbench. Look for new episodes on, well, Wednesdays. You can connect with me over on the Element 14 community. I look forward to seeing you. For now, it is time to get back to watching this week's project video. So I really think the 510 ohm resistor was going to be too bright based on the data sheet. So I took one of my PCBs and I've populated one half of it with the LEDs with 1K resistors and one half each LED with a 3K resistor. Uh, just to compare, so 1K looks good. It's nice and bright. However, 3K actually looks pretty much the same. It, you can tell it's a little less bright, but it's still quite pleasant, quite nice to look at. So I'm going to go ahead and populate the rest of my PCBs with the LED and 3K resistor combo. So I've got my main board and I've <laughs> and I've got my two wings. So now let's get assembling. So now that's the ESP on. I've got a slight problem with the wings. 
where the bottom connector is all completely fine and routed correctly the top connector I've accidentally switched the top two pins I got them the wrong way around so if I uh, just soldered it on uh, LED2 would always be off because there's just five volts going to both sides of LED2 so I'm just going to use a little bit of captain tape to mask off that pad so it doesn't accidentally make a connection and the same with the 5 volt one on here that would have connected and then just hard wire around I'll make a version 2 file of this board um, and then if you get it sent off to be made that should all be corrected so now that's ready I don't need that 5 volt connection because there was 5 volts down on the bottom connection as well and it's all completely connected it was just I had a spare pad so I decided to put it in both places so now I can solder these on So I've got the modification done to the ESP boards so now I want to program them. I've written my program for these in the Arduino IDE. We'll have a quick look at that. I'm using ESP8266 and the PubSub client for MQTT. I've made a Wi-Fi secrets where I've got my SSID and password. Uh, this is the template one, um, so you can take out template and put your SSID and password there and then that will find those. I've got my MQTT server address. I'm giving each one a client ID that's unique for the server to see. This is just so in the future I could have data being passed back from them like the light level and things. And then a mode. I've got my callback for it picking up what mode it should be on, uh, MQTT connect sequence. Uh, in setup I connect the Wi-Fi uh, and set my MQTT server address uh, and then the main loop is just if there's a new mode it should be in it will go and find the new mode and then each time it goes through it will check what mode it's in and set the two IO pins to show which of the four modes I currently want to be in. When I was starting this I was um, hoping to leave the default uh, firmware that comes on them on it. Uh, the documentation showed a whole load of AT commands for the connection as standard but also AT commands for doing MQTT on the device but I couldn't get these to work at all. Um, I somehow suspect you need that it's actually only on certain versions of the ESP, but the documentation didn't tell you which boards. It was just ESP AT commands. Uh, if you've ever got the AT commands to work from the expressive um, documentation, uh, please let me know on the Element 14 community. I'd love to know if there's a way of getting it to work. So now we've got all this connected, there's um, a sequence to get it into programming mode. So we pull down GPIO0, we then pull down reset whilst holding that, um, and that will put into programming mode. We then set the program. So I'm going to do the other four ESP boards the same way, and then I'm going to program uh, the main Pico. So for programming up the Pico, I've soldered it flat onto the PCB. However, this makes it quite hard to put the USB cable in. And even if it wasn't for that, once we've got the wings on to make it 3D, there will be no way to get the USB cable in for programming. So I'm actually going to use the debug pads at the bottom and I'm going to program it with this adapter. This needs 3.3 volts in so I've made a little adapter board that will do 5 volts to 3.3. Uh, this is because I will be powering the bauble off 5 volts so that just means I can connect them both on to my power supply. 
So let's just have a look at the code before I program it. So I've programmed it in C. I'm setting up an array of all the LED pins in a clockwise order from around the outside to the inside. I'm making some defines so I know what I'm starting with. So I've got 20 LEDs. This is how many outputs it's got. There's actually four LEDs on each of those by the time the wings are on. So we're dealing with 80 LEDs. And because of having that many, I'm defining a max count of five to be on at any one time, because that will actually be 20 on at any one time. Then I've just got modes and stuff. I've got my setup. It's uh, setting up all the pins for the right direction. And in our main loop, it's looking to see if there's any direction from the ESP on what mode to be in and then turning on to that mode. I've got all off, all on, flashing and random LED. Come over to the Element 14 community if you'd like me to go through this in any more detail. Just give me a shout. I'm going to use OpenOCD to program this. I'm going to power on the board. I've got these that I'm just going to put through the holes and then put a little pressure on them to make sure they're connected and then we can program it up. So this is going through what I've set as the default status which is the random pattern. This is because I haven't finished assembling it yet so it's not got the ESP on to actually take direction. Um, so yeah that's all working. So here we've got them. I've got four finished baubles in a string. I've just wired them together. They're all in parallel going back to this barrel connector which goes back to a five volt wall power supply. So at the minute they have all connected to the Wi-Fi and turned from default to off. I've got this Raspberry Pi which I use for various MQTT things. It's got a Mosquito server running and this node red. I can click on and they all four are just turned on. And then I can inject flashing and they are all flashing. Or I can do inject random and they all do a random pattern. So this is quite twinkly. So at the minute they are all controlled the same, but they do all have their individual name. So I could address them individually if I wanted and I could control them off something different. I could use something to pass it into here to come back out to the baubles. So let's take a closer look at them. So now we've seen them working. I'm really pleased with how it's all gone. I'm a bit disappointed. I had to make a few modifications to the PCB. Um, I might do a revision too with the added resistors um, and all added in on the PCB. I think that would finish it off really nicely. I also would like to get the uh, ESP fully communicating over serial because I could have a lot more options then with all my control and feedback and feed to them. And I think that would be really good. So I'm also going to try to fiddle with that. But as it stands, I've got some super Christmas tree, Christmas bauble lights for my workshop. I'm really pleased with them. We're right into the Christmas spirit. The last thing I thought of, I sort of wish I'd put a date on them. They're all internet connectable, unpluggable. I thought if I'm going to respin the PCB, I might add the year on them. Uh, because then each year I could make a new one, a different shape and add it into my string of baubles. I thought that might be a really nice little progression of the workshop. What do you think? Let me know over on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. Tell me if you think it's a good idea. 
and then maybe you can convince me to make a new one next year. But for now, that's all. So we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>